The day after the earthquake hit, Kathmandu shook again. A 6.7 magnitude aftershock rocked the capital of Nepal. People ran outside looking for safety. It was too dangerous to stay indoors when buildings were collapsing around them. Earlier, the light of day showed the extent of the damage. It's still not clear how many houses have been destroyed, and the human cost of the disaster is incalculable. These people are worried about one of their loved ones. Rescue teams were able to save him, but he's badly injured. Hospitals are struggling to cope with overcrowding, with doctors having to treat the wounded outside. Supplies are lacking too, and in another complication, the power grid has been badly damaged, meaning that many hospitals are having to work without electricity. Relatives of those who have already died are in mourning. Many of Kathmandu's residents spent the night outside. Between the constant aftershocks and the destruction to their homes, the idea of sleep was unthinkable. Rescue teams spent the night combing through the rubble in search of survivors. Recently, uh, just before, we rescued for uh, 15 people. Uh, next uh, building, uh, opposite to this building, uh, we have, they are all alive. They are all alive and uh, more, more than uh, 50 people are there dead. German rescue teams are preparing to leave for Nepal to join the international aid effort. They're taking water treatment systems which are badly needed to solve the shortage of clean drinking water. They're hoping to help in whatever way they can. We're taking a complete search and rescue team with us. And our medical team will come too so that we're prepared for everything. We can help find people, pull them from the rubble and treat them. Teams from other countries, including Pakistan, India and the U.S., have already arrived in Nepal. They want to help minimize the consequences of the disaster, Nepal's worst earthquake in more than 80 years.